Have you ever wondered how our nervous system works? This intricate network of cells, or neurons, is the body's electrical wiring, transmitting signals between different parts of the body. It's like the body's control center, a supercomputer that helps us move, feel, think, and much more. Key to understanding the nervous system is recognizing its two main parts, the central nervous system, encompassing the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, connecting the rest of the body to the central system. Each has its own unique structure and function, working together in a beautifully coordinated symphony. The peripheral nervous system in particular is a marvel of biological engineering. It consists of the nerves and ganglia outside of the brain and spinal cord. These nerves carry messages to and from the central nervous system playing a vital role in our sensory and motor functions. Today, we're diving deep into the structure of the peripheral nerves and ganglia. Ready to unravel the mysteries of our body? Imagine the peripheral nerves as a bustling city highway system. These highways are made up of numerous lanes or nerve fibers, collected together and enclosed in protective barriers, much like guardrails on a road. Now think of a small bundle of these lanes enclosed within a tubular guardrail. Just like a small part of a highway, this is called a funiculus. If the highway or nerve is small, it may consist only of a single funiculus. But on a larger scale, these funiculi come together into larger bundles or fasciculi, all bound together in a common protective barrier. This protective barrier, or the guardrail for the entire highway system, is known as the epineurium. Much like the guardrails on our roads, the epineurium and the partitions it gives off to separate the fasciculi consist of a strong and flexible material, in this case, connective tissue. The tubular guardrail of the funiculi, or the perineurium, is a fine, smooth, transparent membrane. It's like the safety barrier that keeps the lanes of traffic separate and enclosed. In terms of structure, it too is made up of connective tissue arranged in layers. The nerve fibers, or the lanes of traffic, are held together and supported within the funiculus by delicate connective tissue, called the endoneurium. It's like the road surface that supports the traffic and keeps it flowing smoothly. Let's not forget about the blood vessels. They're like the service roads that run parallel to the highway, supplying necessary resources. These vessels pierce the perineurium, running mostly parallel with the fibers and forming a network of resources. Now imagine certain traffic signals or sensory nerves running along the highway and ending in small roundabouts or tactile corpuscles. These are believed to be important in sensing certain pains. So, those are the highways of our body, transmitting signals across town. But what about the control centers, the ganglia? Let's now take a closer look at the ganglia, the command centers of our nervous system. Diving into the depths of the nervous system, we come across the ganglia, fascinating structures that serve as junctions between various neurons. These small yet powerful nodes of nerve cells are a crucial part of the peripheral nervous system. To put it simply, they're like the traffic control centers of our body, directing the flow of information from our senses to our brain and vice versa. There are three primary types of ganglia in our bodies, each with its unique role to play. The dorsal root ganglia, for instance, sit near the spinal cord and are key players in transmitting sensory information. They capture signals from our senses, everything from the warmth of a summer day to the prick of a needle, and send them racing up to our brain. Then we have the autonomic ganglia, the maestros of our involuntary actions. These ganglia are split further into two types, sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic ganglia are like the gas pedal of a car, pushing our bodies into action during times of stress or danger. On the other hand, the parasympathetic ganglia act as the brakes, helping us relax and conserve energy. Lastly, we have the basal ganglia, nestled deep within the brain. These ganglia are crucial for a variety of functions, including motor control and learning. They help us perform coordinated movements, learn new skills, and even play a role in our emotions and cognition. Each ganglion, regardless of its type, is a hub of activity, bustling with millions of signals that help us navigate our world. They work tirelessly, 
processing and transmitting information at lightning speed, all while remaining virtually unnoticed. Understanding the ganglia gives us insight into how our bodies process and respond to information. But how does all this relate to our everyday life? You might be wondering, why does all this matter? Well, the structure of peripheral nerves and ganglia plays a pivotal role in our everyday lives. Each time you withdraw your hand from a hot surface or your heart skips a beat at a sudden scare, it's your peripheral nerves and ganglia at work. These structures are the unsung heroes that allow us to react instantly to our environment and keep us safe. Think of the peripheral nerves as the body's communication lines, transmitting messages between the brain and rest of the body. These nerve fibers are responsible for both voluntary actions like picking up a cup of coffee and involuntary ones like the beating of our heart. The structure we've discussed with its protective sheaths and supportive connective tissue ensures these signals travel quickly and accurately. The ganglia, on the other hand, are like mini control centers housing clusters of nerve cell bodies. They play a crucial role in reflex actions, allowing us to respond to certain stimuli without the need for the brain's input. This is why you can pull your hand away from a hot stove even before you consciously register the heat. But it's not just about everyday actions. Understanding the structure of peripheral nerves and ganglia has significant scientific implications. By studying these structures, scientists can develop treatments for conditions like peripheral neuropathy, where these nerves are damaged. It also opens the door to advancements in prosthetic technology by informing the development of artificial nerves that can mimic the functions of natural ones. In summary, the peripheral nerves and ganglia are vital components of our nervous system, playing a key role in our interactions with the world around us. Their intricate structure, designed for rapid, accurate signal transmission, is a testament to the marvels of human biology. So there you have it, a journey through the intricate structure of our peripheral nerves and ganglia. The more we learn about our body, the more we realize its extraordinary capabilities. Until next time, keep wondering, keep learning.